Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to talk about one very important property of uh, alternating current. Um, we will talk about alternating current induction. Well, I would say induction is probably the main property of uh, alternating current. Why? we actually use it at our homes and everywhere in industrial world. So, um, this is the fundamental property of AC, alternating current, um, and actually it's the base of the whole transformation of electricity and usage of electricity wherever we use it, which means everywhere actually. That's our main source of energy which basically supplies which moves everything in in our world and this is the property induction is the property it's all based upon that's the main one why why we actually use AC okay first of all um, we did talk about induction before um, we considered a loop, let's say, and if you have some kind of a ammeter or ampere meter which is connected to this loop, if you will take a permanent magnet, let's say, and you will move it inside and out, in and out of this loop, you will see that electricity is basically generated. Well, that's the basic mechanism of induction. What we are doing, moving the permanent magnet, we are changing magnetic field. If, if permanent magnet is standing still, there is no electricity in the loop. But only if it's moving, when we have the uh, variable uh, magnetic field, then electricity is generated. More precisely, we have actually formulated as variable um, magnetic flux, flux which goes through this loop. So it all depends on intensity of the magnetic field, uh, shape of the loop, etc. And we actually um, proved that the EMF, electromotive force, which is inducted in this loop whenever we are changing magnetic field um, this EMF is related to a changing magnetic flux this is the rate of changing the first derivative it's a rate of changing of magnetic flux phi which goes through this loop where magnetic field where magnetic flux is actually um, the uh, product of intensity of the magnetic field in Teslas, if you remember, the units. And this is the area of this loop. And this is only whenever we are perpendicularly moving. Um, if there is some kind of an angle, then there is a cosine of the angle, or sine of the angle, depending on how you, basically, how you measure the angle from the vertical or from the horizontal part. So, we will concentrate mostly on this formula because we will use this perpendicular kind of magnetic fields. So, there is no angle here. Okay, so, intensity is changing. Whenever we are moving our permanent magnet, uh, we are moving it closer, which means intensity is greater, or further, which means intensity is less. So we did all these experiments with a permanent magnet. So why did we move this magnet? Because we wanted to create a, a variable uh, magnetic flux. Now, with AC, we already have this variable magnetic flux. And here is why. If you will put another let me put it at an angle a little bit.
So if this is another loop, these loops are parallel in, in the parallel planes near each other. Now if you have a variable AC, if you have alternating current in this particular loop, this is the source. What happens? Well, we all know that whenever you have a current around it, there is always magnetic field. But in this case, because our current is variable, right? AC means alternating current. It all depends on how we produce electricity. We were talking about the frame which is rotating in the magnetic field, etc. So, this is AC, which means our current is variable. Since our current is variable, our um, intensity of the magnetic field inside of this loop and outside, well, in the in neighborhood, is variable. So, we don't have to move anything. Like in, in the previous case, I was moving the permanent magnet through this um, uh, uh, wire loop. In this case, I don't have to move anything. So these wire loops are parallel to each other and the magnetic field goes it, it goes through the center of these these are lines of magnetic field but again since my um uh current is alternating the magnetic field will also be alternating my current is changing in magnitude as a sinusoidal uh, function, so it's changing the direction all the time, which means my magnetic field will also change direction and the strength. So, from plus maximum to zero to minus maximum, back to zero to plus maximum, etc. So, that's how my um, current is uh, changing, and that's how my um, intensity of uh, magnetic field is changing and that's how the flux which goes through this second wire the secondary wire the flux is changing and since the flux is changing we do have exactly the same thing we have induced EMF in this particular thing and if you have this ampermeter then you will detect that there is uh, an in, in, in inducted uh, electricity current which goes actually again back and forth, back and forth. Now with ampermeter we also we are usually uh, measuring the effective uh, current. If you remember from the previous lecture there is an effective current. Um, but in any case we understand that this is basically a sinusoidal change of the flux and that's why sinusoidal change of the um, induced electricity. So, how this is going through the formulas? Well, let's start from this thing. This is alternating current, which means we have the source, primary source of um, EMF. This is the voltage here, generated by I don't know, hydroelectric station, whatever. And this is basically a sinusoidal kind of thing, cosine omega t. That's how we usually put it. Now, from this follows that my current is also alternating. I0 is some kind of a maximum and cosine of omega t. Fine. Now, if you remember intensity of the magnetic field which is um, generated by the current which goes through this wire loop. In the center, we did calculate it in the center. So, intensity, primary intensity was, um, what was it? In the vacuum, it was mu zero, which is permeability of vacuum, times um, the current which is running in the loop and it's variable that's why this is variable um, and I think we should divide it by 2R where R is the radius of the loop 
Let me check if I... Yeah, something like this. So this was our formula. So whenever... But now this is in the center. Uh, in other uh, parts of the loop, quite frankly, I just don't know how it will look. It will probably be similar. But I'm not, I'm not sure it's exactly the same. But probably similar. But in any case, it's always proportional to the current. Maybe some other parameters which determine how far from the center um, this point actually is. Through the symmetry, it's probably only another parameter would be the radius from the center to a point to find out what exactly the magnitude of uh, my uh, intensity is. But it doesn't really matter. It will still be probably uh, proportional. And approximately, I can really uh, use this particular expression as the intensity. And if this is intensity, it goes through this loop. If loops are close enough, so almost all um, lines of magnetic lines are going through this secondary loop, uh, that gives me the flux which goes through the secondary loop equals to B primary of T times S, where S is the radius of the uh, of the loop and it's changing obviously you see this is changing as i of t as current current is cosine so whenever i would like to calculate what's my induced emf i just have to take the derivative of this with a minus sign by the way i didn't mention it but minus sign was explained in the lecture about self-induction because the induced electricity is always goes, induced EMF is, is always directed against the primary EMF. But that was addressed in previous lecture, one of the previous lectures. Okay, so now what we have to do is we can calculate our secondary EMF, secondary of T. It's equal to this, which is minus. Well, S is a constant, obviously. Um, the derivative of this is derivative of this. So mu is constant, 2R is constant, and all I have is basically derivative of I, uh, of the current. Now, this is I0, so it would be, again, this is a constant. Derivative of cosine is minus sine, so I will have plus sine omega t, and the derivative of the inner function it would be omega here. So basically that's the formula for secondary, which quite frankly doesn't matter what it is. We can say it's S0, some kind of a 0, which is this, times sine of omega t. So as you see, my primary is uh, sinusoidal, like cosine, and my secondary EMF in induced by, by the principle of uh, AC generated variable flux, etc., is also sinusoidal. The only thing is, this is a cosine, this is a sine, which means they are shifted. Remember the graph of the sine and graph of, graph of cosine, they're just shifted by. Uh, 90 degrees, pi over 2. Um, okay, so these are basic basic calculations which show that this secondary loop will have certain generated uh, induced EMF and we can measure it in some way or another. Now, this is the theory actually. This is the basic principle. It's not really yet practical. And to make it practical, I would introduce few improvements to this very simple model. Okay? So let's forget about all these. This is all fine. All I wanted to prove actually that this sinusoidal kind of a uh, character of secondary EMF. 
So my first improvement is the following. Now you remember there was a constant mu zero, right? Mu zero is permeability of vacuum. Probably air is very similar. Now this is something which depends actually on what's in between these two rings, these two wire loops, right? Now there are different materials we can use, not only vacuum or air. We can put something which has a better permeability, which means that magnetic um, field goes easier through these materials. Well, it's all actually based on iron, ferromagnetic materials, we know about them. So they're used you know, everywhere. So you know that if you will um, put, let's say, a wire around a nail and the wire will be connected to a battery now nail becomes a magnet that's called electromagnetism now why it happens because the current which is running through the wire around the nail it produces its own magnetic field and this magnetic field is reorienting um, atoms inside the iron, inside this material of the nails are made of, and by orienting them we are making actually this nail a magnet, because the property of magnetism is related to synchronous orientation, the same orientation of all the atoms, or most of the atoms, um, in, in, in this particular material. So. What happens if I will change the direction of the current? Well, these ferromagnetics are very sensitive to the current which is goes around them, um, which means that uh, they are very responsive. If the current changes the direction, the magnetism is changed to the opposite. So whenever we have an AC and the current is changing direction, whatever number of times, per second, like 50 or 60 times per second, my uh, ferromagnetic material, which is inside of this, if I will put it in, uh, will also change the direction. And what's very important is that the permeability of ferromagnetic is significantly greater than um, permeability of the vacuum. So the magnetic lines tend to be more concentrated. So if you have, um, let's say, um, this a wire loop with some kind of a AC going through this. Now, in general, magnetic field can be expressed as these type of magnetic lines, but if you have an iron core inside this loop, the magnetic lines would be this, and then they will go out. Now, why would magnetic lines go through this ferromagnetic core rather than just outside? Well, that's very easy. Whenever you have a um, certain flow if you have more resistance in one way and less resistance in another way, let's say it's uh, the river and the river is splitting into two but one channel is very narrow and another is very wide. Where is the energy of the river goes? Obviously to the wide much more than to the, um, to the narrow, right? So since it's easier for magnetic field to go this way then most of the energy generated by um, current which is running in this um, loop uh, will be going through this. So what I will do, I will put a ferromagnetic core inside these two <coughs> um, wire loops. What does it give me? Well, it gives me the concentration of energy generated by this particular um, current 
concentrating this in uh, this ferromagnetic core, which means all the magnetic, or almost all the magnetic energy, um, all the magnetic lines, all the magnetic energy going through the second loop. There is no dissipation like this. This is dissipation. But now with this core, I don't have this dissipation. I have almost all energy directed here. So that's my first improvement. By the way, this means much greater than. And uh, for um, iron, for instance, the mu is about 200,000 times greater than the vacuum. So that actually allows to concentrate the magnetic field energy through this iron core. So that's my first improvement. Now, let me do my second improvement. Now, what happens in this particular ca case? Well, magnetic energy still is dissipating here, right? So, how can I do even better? Well, simply. That's how. So I will connect my ferromagnetic core, my iron core, would be a loop in itself. And again, since my iron has the permeability significantly greater than uh, air around it, practically everything will be in a circle. So magnetic field will not dissipate. I mean, it will dissipate, but tiny amount. Most of the magnetic field generated will be only here. Okay. That's very important. And now let's just think about self-induction. This is something which um, I never actually saw it in the book, in the textbook. But here is what happens. Now, since we have a variable magnetic field here, it will obviously um, induce um, electric current not only in this, but also in this. Now, this new EMF will be the source of another change in the magnetic field. And another change in the magnetic field will be a source of changing an e of EMF. So my point is that after a while we will have exactly the same magnetic field, changing magnetic field, going through both um, wires and it will probably equalize EMFs here and there. So whatever is produced here after a certain amount of time, when all these mutual um, effects, uh, variable uh, current produces variable magnetic field in the core, variable magnetic field in the core induced a secondary self-induced um, EMF in this, and some induced EMF here. So it's the same magnetic field variable magnetic field uh, will go through this same uh, two loops, wire loops, and it should actually equalize the EMF in both of them. So, and this is not just a one particular step, like from variable electricity, we have variable magnetic field, and variable magnetic field results in a self-induced electricity in this, no, it actually continues. I think it continues. Again, I never actually saw it explained in this way, but it seems to be reasonable. So the next change of the um, 
EMF here will change next change in current, next change in the current will change magnetic field. So it's kind of a, uh, probably it might actually be calculated somehow through the infinite sum of infinitesimal increments, like integral. Um, but I don't know, it, it just my, my thoughts about this. It seems to be reasonable. Anyway, the EMF will equalize in this case. Okay. My next improvement, what if instead of one wire loop, I will have a double loop? So it's one and another, like this. And this is the source of electricity. <coughs> well, well, the current in one loop is producing certain um, variable magnetic field. It's a variable current, so it's variable alternating current, so it's variable magnetic field. And exactly the same current goes through the second loop, second turn of this wire, right? So it will also produce uh, its own magnetic field, magnetic field intensity, and intensities are like vectors that are adding together. So I will have uh, two times stronger magnetic field by two turns of the wire I will have double magnetic field strengths. So that's very important. Using the same source of energy I can create a stronger magnetic field by using more than one loop. And if I'm using N, P, P stands for primary loops here I will have and P times greater magnetic field, stronger. Stronger magnetic field, it's just a multiplier, so it's uh, a magnetic flux is a function, so it will be a multiplier in the magnetic field flux, and uh, obviously the resulting uh, EMF induced in the second loop will be also doubled, or tripled, or times NP. So that's how I can increase the magnetic flux here, and therefore I will increase um, the voltage, EMF. Now, what if I will have a certain number of loops here? Well, again, since every turn, every loop actually is a source of um, induced EMF and now I will have like two or three or NS S stands for secondary if I will have NS I will have NS sources of EMF sequentially um, connected to each other right because it's a one and then another they're sequentially connected as a result if I have sequential EMFs, they're supposed to be added as well. So that's how I can actually take from fixed magnetic field, I can take more um, uh, EMF. So, what happens here is that if NP is equal to NS, like 1 and 1, or 100 and 100, I will have the same EMF in both cases. So if these are equal, these will be equal. If, however, I have, let's say, twice as big, if, let's say, NP is equal to 2NS, so I have two times as many primary as the secondary, what happens here? Well, Let's just, you know, think about this. Um, I will produce more than I will, uh, I will take out. So what happens is I will have only half of the energy. If I have the same, I will have the same energy. But if I have uh, uh, half of this, I will consume less uh, magnetic flux. If I will consume less magnetic flux, 
in this case uh, half factor by two, uh, my EMF will be half. So in this case, my UP of time would be uh, twice US of t. If, on the other hand, my NS, my secondary, is twice as big as primary, so primary is equal to half of uh, secondary, my primary EMF would be half of my secondary EMF. So what happens here is, using different numbers of turns in my primary and secondary coils, I would call them coils now, it's not wire loops, it's coils actually. So using the numbers we can uh, change the relationship between um, the EMFs in the primary and secondary. And that's very, very important because whenever you want to transfer, uh, transfer electricity um, along a very long wire, you are interested in changing the um, current in this wire because the current is the source of heat. Remember, I square R T. That's the amount of energy consumed by resistor R during the time T if there is a current I. So we have to reduce this. But now, since we are changing the voltage, changing the EMF in both coils, primary and secondary, we still have the uh, conservation of energy law. What is the energy of the electricity? It's U times I, right? Whether it's direct or, uh, or alternating doesn't really matter. So this primary should be equal to secondary. Otherwise, my energy would be produced from nothing, right? So, which means that if my secondary energy is, um, if my secondary voltage is twice as big, my secondary current should be half as big as this one. So that's how, by increasing the voltage using the secondary coil significantly more turns than the primary, I will increase the EMF, right, in this particular case. But that would dis decrease my current. That's why immediately after producing the electricity, let's say on some kind of a power station, we are increasing the voltage using device like this, which is basically called transformer. We'll talk about this later. So we um, we increase the voltage, that automatically decreases the amperage and whenever I have a very small current, very small amperage, it doesn't lose as much, because I is very small now, it doesn't lose as much energy just to heat the wire which is uh, transmitting my electricity to a long, long distance. And that's actually the purpose of the whole exercise which I was just doing. Because that allows us to transmit electricity to a very long distance. These transformers based on the induction, AC induction, alternating current induction, are very important. Well, that's it. I would suggest you to read um, the notes for this lecture. There are some very nice pictures, much better than whatever I uh, draw here. They're all on unizor.com. It's called Physics 14 course, electromagnetism, and then you go to AC current. That we, that's where you will find this lecture. That's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.